It sounds like someone needs a demonstration. I'll show you exactly how powerful I am. I take my hand like this. I point. Mary. And... Do it, you son of a bitch. No! 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 The first thing that struck me about the single player in Homefront The Revolution is that it dispensed with moralizing immediately. The KPA want to torture you and the Resistance want to torture you, particularly your nipples for some reason. Okay. Nipples first. Neither faction are initially likable and that's a good thing. One of the problems with the breakdown of civilization is that people forget how to be civilized and revert to their tribal allegiances. The speed at which people resort to violence in this broken world is astonishing. <laughs> And that's great! You're about to shoot a bunch of people with a flaming shotgun. So why bother pretending you have the moral high ground? The campaign gameplay of Homefront after that point turns into a war of attrition. Hit and run attacks, taking outposts, and generally resorting to guerrilla style tactics. If I had to make a parallel to other games, it'd probably be Far Cry 4 in an urban setting. You quickly learn that staying and shooting it out will lead to never-ending waves of enemies, dwindling ammo, and a high likelihood of death. Even worse, if you're a skilled player and manage to best the soldiers, drones, and armored trucks in front of you, eventually a giant terrifying blimp will show up and chase you around the map until you crawl into a hidey hole. God damn it! Airship's coming! Fall back! Fall back! On the flip side, to help you in your pursuit of rebelling, is good old-fashioned American ingenuity in the form of modified weapons. Players can purchase several variants of each weapon, and using the classic cry engine, swap attachments or even the entire upper receiver out in the field. During the two-hour demo, I was able to get an incendiary shotgun conversion called the Infernal Launcher that made combat a flaming heap of fun. Also spotted in the starting area was a pneumatic pistol and a crossbow to make those silent kills. Homefront both takes its settings seriously and its loot not too seriously, which delivers a consistent set of new things to play with and environmental challenges to try them on. The starting area map itself was fairly large and could be traversed in a number of ways, on foot, motorcycle, or with a pretty responsive parkour system. We're ambushing this patrol. Brady, best if you go with G-Man. Just do what he says. Try not to die. At the end of my demo, I'd say I had a great time with Homefront The Revolution. The open map, hit and run gameplay, and fun weapon and loot system delivered toys and activities at a consistent pace. The big question at this point is if the game's further areas can keep the formula fun with different activities and better loot, some of which was seen in the multiplayer beta. If so, then Homefront The Revolution could shape up to be a very rewarding sandbox-style shooter.